Welcome to our Capture 2019 tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to take a closer look at rendering and view settings. You can access the rendering settings by going to the Views category of the Design tab and pressing the button at the bottom labeled Rendering Settings. This opens a dialog with a collection of rendering settings and I am going to go through the most important ones of them. Let's start with the multiple apertures visualization. This setting affects fixtures like the BB7s rigged at the back of the stage here. These have seven apertures each and the leftmost fixtures fixture is in this case using the same color for each of the apertures whereas the rightmost fixture has got separate colors in each aperture. If I change this setting to the simple mode, each of the fixtures emits a single beam of light colored as the average of the colors. Whereas if I set it to the realistic setting, each aperture emits its own beam of light and the result of the mixing together is seen further down in the beam. The automatic setting, which is the default setting, uses a single beam of light when all of the apertures have the same color, otherwise it uses individual beams. Now let's take a look at the resolution limit setting. This setting may be difficult to see in this video, but in effect, it, when set to a low number, Capture renders the visualization at a lower resolution than your screen and then upscales it. Disabling it or setting it to a higher number of course creates nicer looking visualizations but is more demanding on the graphics card. Moving on, we have the atmospheric resolution and beam atmospheric detail. You may need to tweak these settings individually depending on your current design, but in an attempt to show what they do, let's take a look at the beams of the breakup gobos as well as the beam that passes through the tree here. As I reduce these settings, you can see that information in the beams is lost. The atmospheric resolution setting renders the beams at a lower resolution than the rest of the visualization, and the beam atmospheric detail is related to the amount of sampling we do throughout the beam. So in this case, we're basically just sampling one, two or three points of the beam as it's passed through the tree, causing us to lose a lot of information. Equally, the breakup gobos look a lot simplified with this low setting. These settings are both at medium by default, and our recommendation is that you only tweak these if you're really looking for those extra frames per second of your visualization. The same reasoning goes with the rest of the settings here, which you only really need to disable if you really have to push capture that extra little bit. Now let's take a look at some of the view settings. The view settings are also available in the views category of the design tab, and they are listed in the top section here. Each view, the alpha, beta and gamma view, has its own column of settings. Let's focus on the settings of the alpha view, the first column. Let's start with looking at the exposure properties. The exposure is basically the brightness of the view and works very similar to that of the digital camera. By default, automatic exposure is enabled. This allows Capture to automatically adjust the exposure based on whether you are currently visualizing a dim scene or a very bright scene. Occasionally though, this can get in the way and you may need to disable it and take full control of the exposure yourself. The next setting I want to show you is the Hue Clamp setting. This is in many ways related to the exposure setting in that it controls the amount of hue that is preserved in very bright areas of the scene. Lowering the hue clamp setting leads to an overexposure of very bright parts of the scene. This, however, is more compatible with how a digital camera would capture the reality. 
In some cases, though, when programming pixel effects or specifically programming aperture colors, it is useful to increase the hue clamp to completely preserve the hues of the apertures. As you may notice, though, it results in a slightly unrealistic look, even though it can be useful at times. And finally, the bloom effect controls the amount of blooming that happens around very bright areas of light. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.